Hi folks and welcome back. In this video I'm going to show you how to make an induction soldering iron that can heat up very quickly using a uh, 24 volt 2 amp switch mode power supply and modifying the power supply in such a way that it can inductively heat up the uh, metal screw on the, on the tip of the soldering iron. So to build your project, you're gonna first of all need a switch mode power supply. This is two amps, 24 volts, which is the one I'm using here. You're gonna need some 18 gauge magnet wire, and this needs to be wound around a standard glue stick to make your resonant coil, your uh, heating coil. You're gonna need some alumina. This is basically alumina fire blanket. You can get this stuff from, um, from Amazon. Some resonant capacitors. These are 3.3 microfarad film caps rated at 400 volts. You're gonna need three of these connected together in parallel to give you a total of 10 microfarads. You're gonna need a, uh, a heating tip. I'm using a machine screw for my heating tip and I just cut the end at an at oblique to make it into a solder tip. You're gonna need a 100 ohm uh, resistor. This is a uh, power resistor rated at five watts. I'm actually using a 10 watt resistor. A European style screw connector or terminal connector. These are available on Amazon. They're very handy. And then some hookup wire, and then of course some tools. And that's basically all you need to build this project. In an earlier video, a YouTuber by the name of Jaffa Zilders was able to make an induction heater using a similar power supply as mine. I tried his method and followed it exactly, but it did not work at all. I noticed that in his build, there was no resonant capacitor in the tank circuit. So I was unable to get any heating when I tried his method. The power supply is really easy to take apart. You just have to uncover the screws by basically pulling back the labels. And then it's uh, very easy from there on. So that transformer that you see there with the yellow tape on it, that's what you want to wrap the wire around. You need to take the yellow tape off the edges of it in order to open the transformer up. It has to be desoldered to do that. And then you can wrap, wrap two turns of 18 gauge wire. That's what I plan to use, two turns of 18 gauge wire around that core. I just desoldered the transformer with some solder wick. You can get it out. You can see the holes here. I had to suck all the solder out of it with a solder sucker, and then the remnants of solder, I got those with solder wick. Took the transformer out, unwound the tape around the edges of the transformer, separated the core, and you can see where the core breaks right there, and wound this 24 gauge wire around a part of the exposed core on this edge. And um, then I closed it back up and put the tape back on, and I'm gonna re-solder it back in. Okay, I put the transformer back in. The core of the transformer has two turns of 18 gauge wire on it. And I'm covering over the exposed wires with um, thermal uh, insulating uh, tubing to help it not short with any of the components on the circuit board. Next, need to strip the enamel off the exposed magnet wire with sandpaper. As this induction soldering iron will not work without a resonant tank capacitor bank, I'm putting together 10 microfarads of capacitance here. There are three 3.3 microfarad capacitors. These are high frequency polypropylene capacitors connected together in parallel. I found that there's no heating if you don't have these. The value of these capacitors was determined empirically. I basically tested a whole bunch of different capacitances and found that I got the highest amount of heating and voltage in the tank circuit with 10 microfarads. 
a load has to be connected to the output of the um, switch mode power supply. You can see that bulb over there before it'll output anything. And with no load, it won't output anything. So I've got a bulb here. This is actually a 60 watt bulb. You can see I get sine waves if I put a 10 microfarad capacitor bank. I tried different values and 10 microfarads gave me the best, the best voltage and most heating. And as soon as I uh, disconnect the capacitor bank, it goes back to non-usable um, square waves. Without the capacitor bank, the voltage and current in the circuit drops a lot and the coil is no longer resonant. Notice the difference in frequency. To wind our resonant coil, I decided to use just a standard glue, tip, glue stick. These are 0.43 inches in diameter and that translates to about 12 millimeters across. I used that to wind the coil and uh, I used an 18 gauge wire. Okay folks, I'm winding a total of 15 turns of this around the glue stick to make my um, heating coil. Next thing to do is use a blade to strip off all the enamel. We're going to use this machine screw as our heating element. I'm going to cut it obliquely so I have a good surface for soldering. I'm using this piece of Dalron to create a handle for the soldering iron. So I'm going to drill it so I can put my heating element in it. Now we're adding a terminal connector so we can easily connect it to the um, modified uh, switch mode power supply. This can be further secured to the Delron rod using a screw. To make the heating element, take the um, screw the machine screw and wrap around it fire blanket this is aluminum oxide fire blanket material you can get this stuff really cheaply from amazon and uh, i wrapped it around fairly tightly and then secured it using some uh, del uh some um, kaftan tape as you can see here you can buy this tape it's very high temperature tape and it's very strong and very thin so it works really well for securing and making a snug fit between the, the screw and the aluminum oxide. That's gonna be our insulating layer. You can just trim off any excess tape and uh, fire blanket material. Now it fits really snugly in the induction coil as you can see here. Here's the finalized test version of the soldering iron, the induction soldering iron. So we're gonna test it out shortly. Here's the finalized setup. I actually took the light bulb off and replaced it with a 100 ohm ceramic power resistor. Here's the power resistor connected across the load in place of the light bulb. This works much better. Okay, here's a test run. I'm just soldering some components on a piece of perf board and it's working perfectly, better than I even thought it would. Now here's some other test coils that I made. I found that 15 turns works best in this setup. The wire pair connecting the resonant capacitors and the soldering iron can be fairly long and it works still just as well. Here's a quick thermal analysis of the soldering tip. It heats up really fast. So, in summary, we've created a very simple, efficient, and rapidly heating induction soldering iron. 
and uh, using very simple materials. The key being the switch mode power supply here. I hope you enjoy this video. Please uh, subscribe to this channel and uh, hit the bell so you get reminded about future videos and hope to see you back on this channel soon.